The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 139, Nasdaq up 71, S&P's up 25, gold contract down $12.40 at 1507. You get silver down 30 cents, 16 dollars 89 cents. Light sweet crude up a buck, 52 dollars 23 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year down 19 ticks, 129.17. The 30 year down a full point, plus 25 ticks, 14. Now the 30 year folks did the full ABC structure uh, on the way up. So it hit the first price projection. You're backing down with uh, light volume. These things still want higher price, lower yield. King dollar, King dollar up 95 ticks, trading 97.440. That's going to need more volume to go lower. Bottom line, you get a sideways move out there yesterday. No sellers, no buyers out here yesterday. Euro, Euro is at 111. The yen is at 106. And the pound is trading out here at 121 to 1 U.S. dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, if you want to see have a great program, understand option, option strategies, futures, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't test-driven yet the Think of Swim platform, come over to our website, hit that banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. Outstanding professional platform. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. You know, these are, this is, the, you know, the day after you get a big move in the market, both down and then back up. It's always interesting to watch how the dust settles, Isn't it? right? And if we re start to return to fundamentals, like, for instance, the dollar's stronger, so gold is down pretty hard today. Yeah. Things like that. I mean, I think the, the recovery, or not the recovery, but the... Uh, you know, the, the, the little sell-off we're having in the bonds here, you're probably right. It's probably very hesitant and on, not on very big volume because I think there's not a lot of people want to make a lot of bets up at this level. So, But I think, I think the next couple of days and some of the data, PPI out Friday, we get CPI not till Tuesday morning of next week. Uh, that'll give us, you know, that that's the first time we'll see some data in a couple of days. That'll give us something to trade off, especially in the inflation area. Sure. And, you know, folks, if you had listened to Kevin, Tommy, and myself yesterday, you know, we had a, we had a nerve, there's no doubt, saying that, yeah, we're going to have a bounce down to 28, 23 when the market was getting trashed. And it's just so interesting. We were talking about trading markets, Kevin, and this is the ultimate in a trading market. I mean, yes. you know, you, you get, you don't need the tops, you don't need the bottoms, folks. You need the, the, the middle. And, you know, bottom line is that, um, you know, we'll see where this bounce goes, but this is a, this is a decent bounce, you know. Right. I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of green on the board today, and a lot of things are going back to some of the fundamentals. I mean, the, the, the fact that crude oil's up. You know, they hit it really hard yesterday. Yeah. The fact that that's bouncing back, uh, I like the fact that some of the, I'm looking at some stocks here. It looks like uh, all of the, um, well, it looks like Amazon's pretty much unchanged, but four of the five FANG stocks are up on the day today. Obviously, the NASDAQ's going to be uh, the most, you know, responsive because of the beta of some of those names. But you know what I'm going to watch today? I'm going to watch the financials and, and how that affects the Russell. Yeah. Because with with yields, you know, you know, solidly firmer from where they were yesterday, uh, I'm going to see what that does to the banks and the financials. See if we get any bounce here, because some of them were pretty beat up the last couple of days. You make a great point, Kevin, because you know I, I hadn't seen that yesterday, and then when I was driving home, I was listening to Bloomberg last night, and they were talking about that. And I just brought J.P. Morgan up, and this yeah. is very unusual, folks. I mean, you know, you're talking about one of the premier banks four days ago was at 116. And the problem is, is that that went into 105, which is going into the last swing point with sellers. You know, we're talking yeah. about there's some sellers out there. That's interesting, man. And I guess fundamentally it does make sense, meaning that, you know, those rates are so inexpensive. 
But man, if I was born again, man, I think I'd be born a banker. <laughs> or oh, oh, you know what? Even better, insurance. It, it, um, you know what? My father told me insurance is definitely it. Absolutely. And all you have to do, folks, is look around every city. Who owns the biggest buildings and where the biggest signs are? It, it, it's true. Yeah, Warren Buffett. You know where yeah. Warren Buffett made his the, the most of his money? Insurance. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Collecting pre and 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 the parallels between option trading and insurance. Unbelievable, yeah. right? Yeah. You're collecting premiums or paying them, yeah. and you're either paying it out or not paying it out. Yeah, that's, that's the, 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 the correlation is yeah. is strong. It is strong. It is. It's, that's so cool, man. It's so true. Yeah. yeah. Forget being a bank. I'd have a tough time. Yeah. Being a right. Anyway. Hey, hey, you know what? No. <laughs> if you're good at insurance, you'll use bankers for the other way. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, storing exactly. your money. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. I'm telling you, man. But yeah. you know what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at, number one, we're going to look at Uber. That's got earnings after the bell. Nice. And we're going to cover how, how Lyft traded yesterday. But then we're going to take a look at something that I've been kind of not, uh, you know, pounding for for a couple of days here, and that's Boeing. Okay. We're going to take a hard look at Boeing because if you look at the news uh, filter on Boeing, you're starting to get some drips of some – they're starting to have workshops with pilots okay. and yeah. Chinese pilots, which tells me, I think, they're getting closer and closer to getting this 737 MAX fixed and in the air. Because if they're having workshops, that means they're retraining pilots yeah. with some of the things. And so we're, we're going to look at Boeing today. We're going to look at some a long-term bullish strategy in Boeing nice. and a way to do it for less expensive. I mean, Boeing trades $330. We're going to look at a way to trade it for much less than buying 100 shares of stock and trading and spending $33,000. Yeah. I, I just, I had seen that headline too. I think it was the Chinese pilots, Kevin, right? Yes. And, and they're and doing workshops with them to kind of reteach them, which tells me that they're starting to get close on some of these upgrades. On some of these updates. I agree, man, because I said to myself, just I said, you know, there's a lot of hysteria in the U.S. press, right? I don't know what it's like in the Chinese press. Right. And if Boeing's just cool with China and they start putting planes, the Max, back in yep. there, and maybe we're in a little bit of a bubble here and hearing all the Boeing news, and guess what? And it guys, costs, yeah. right, and guys, think about this. Boeing had a flight safety issue. What's the difference between that and a food safety issue like, like Chipotle had? Yeah. Right, yeah. and when they get through that, and time passes, and safety and and confidence returns, you know these yeah. stocks are beat up pretty big, just like Chipotle was beat up pretty bad. Oh. And maybe it's somewhere you, where we can find some value. I still think they're going to have to rename that plane, at least in the U.S. or something. I don't yeah. know. We'll see what happens. And they can. Yeah. They, can. they can. Oh, overnight they'll yeah. just call it a different know, a different name. Listen, and you know, and then people just say, "Oh, you rename it." Say, just yeah, so you don't it. have to say, "Everyone knows the 737 Max." That's got to go out of the the vocabulary, I think. You but, might but, have something there, Tommy. And yeah. perception is reality, right? It is. We know that. It, that would be enough with time, like you say, enough. And right. You know, it's interesting. You can go like between the Chipotle and Boeing, right? My take would be, you know, the Chipotle may not have come back. Okay, where Boeing's gonna come back. It's yeah. my own perception no, I, now. But you know right. what I mean? Chipotle could have went away. Boeing, a duopoly no, with... with not going to go they, away. You can't, they no, can't go it's, away. It's not going to happen. The, right. the world right. needs right. them. Right. I mean, we need right. them. The I country. agree. And, right. then, yeah. and they may also made some comments on their defense uh, part of their business. It's very strong. So we're going to look at it today nice. and look, take a good hard look at it. 45 minutes right from now, folks. Kevin, you have a great one, a safe one. Of course, have a great weekend. We look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday. Great talking to you guys. Have a good day. You Thank too, Kevin. You. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. The Dow up 141. Nasdaq up 76. S&P's up 27. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 141. You get the Nasdaq up 79. S&P's up 27. Let's go to AMD. So this is quite uh, news out here this morning. Uh, AMD uh, up 10% right now. Not bad. Uh, yeah. And the, the news here, folks, is that they, uh, they're claiming, well, they, they're not just claiming. Uh, I'm sure it's probably true, that they, their chips now for the server business is fa are faster than uh, Intel's. Yeah. And they got an order, evidently, from uh, Google. Um, so let's see. Advanced Micro spiked on Thursday after it unveiled the new server processor that said it performed better than the cheaper, uh, than, and is cheaper than products from Intel. Analysts were positive uh, on the potential uh, AMD chip. And I know there was... Uh, so better chips, cheaper chips. Yeah. If that's the case, and, watch out. In right? the server market. In the server market. So that's that's quite a... And, that's and you had Intel, I think it said down 1.8%. Uh, so oh, I don't there know, you go. I don't know, yeah, I don't that know makes when, sense. I don't know when that was written, though. We'll see where yeah. now. So it's paired yeah. some of those losses. Right. But right. Um, quite a move for AMD. AMD, mammoth company, too. It's only trading at 23 bucks. Can you go into AMD yeah. uh, for a sec there, market cap? Because this is where the skew of, like, you know, what the... The price of an equity, yeah, thirty-five billion dollar company, even though it's only trading at thirty-two dollars, versus right. you know you have some companies trading at four hundred dollars, that are still thirty billion dollar companies. Sure, yeah, sure. Um, Kraft Heinz. So let's get over to Kraft Heinz. Okay, yeah, you said middle of the shopping aisle. Middle man. of the shopping aisle. Struggling. People are not going in it. Uh, they're still going in it a little bit. Just yeah. not, just not what they used to. We pull up. Still a mammoth company. Thirty, yeah. twenty something billion dollars in revenue a year. This is a one-way trip. I mean, know? look at the surprises, man. Every time, it's like... 2017, I, you're at $87, you're at 26 That's now, bananas. And because they renamed this, you know, they didn't rename it, but bottom line is that it started trading by itself because they kicked it out of a Montelise. Okay. It, you know, they separated Montelise, it. Montelise, yeah. And, uh, you know, who knows where it's going to go because it just broke... It's, uh, well, 26.96 here, 26.87. Just broke a swing low. Pretty remarkable, man. Yeah. I'm guessing that was their last earnings before that. Yeah. The spike in February. And, was and when gonna... you actually look at it, the revenue, fundamentally, it looks pretty... That's it. I mean, they're a $32 billion company. Look at those earnings. But yeah. you have seen a decline, right? Zero, not even zero growth. You're losing almost $2 billion in revenue. Um, 
but we're going to see some growth maybe next year. And earnings, they're still making money. You know, you got a company pulling in $26 billion a year yeah. and making profits. Yeah, it looks like, it, actually, when we look at this, it, 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 it looks like cheese and dairy is still growing. This, they're claiming it is, anyway, by 23% over a three-year yeah, period. Yeah, I don't Ambient meats. What are ambient meats? Are they, are they cut, sure. they're cut up meats, probably? Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe it could be processed meats. Yeah. They're 11, selling, that grown like by 11 percent. Frozen and chilled meatballs. Really? That specific? Check, check this out, folks. Now this. Oh man. If that. If the meatball business is a 2.5 billion I, dollar I business. They, they get this. If you're in the car in the beautiful West Coast of the United States right now, folks, that we're we're reading um, this product this, segments. Yep. And they have frozen and chilled meatballs. At 2.5 billion in revenue, yeah. it's, it's possible, man. Maybe they own Mama Mia's and uh, you yeah. know those ads we always hear. I think that's exactly what it has right. to be. I'm trying to click on it for more info. It's not letting me, but yeah, 2.5 billion and still wow. growing at five percent for every three years. Um, it's not often that you see these product segments be so precise. I know. So maybe it is something I that's know. very particular. Um, pretty remarkable. Mama Mancini's, man. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, I mean, just a mammoth company still, you know, but man, 52 week lows, like you said, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I know. Now, the other side of that, Roku, oh, right? So, so get out of the processed food business, get into get, the streaming get business. Get into the streaming business. So, this Roku here. Not bad, up about 20% right yeah, now. Yeah. It's easy and, to calculate percentages when it closes at 100 and it's up 20 bucks. Yeah. Look and at look, those numbers. Look at the revenue, folks, okay? So 2015, they did 319 million. Yeah. Million. Yeah. This year, 1.1 billion. Yeah. And what's a even remarkable year? Last year they did 742. Yeah. They're going to double it in two years to 1.4. Yeah. That's that's 100 percent growth from right. 2018. And keeping in mind, I was saying you, we can go into the news for them. Um, I don't understand. When are they going to make any money though? Well, yeah, and they're losing <laughs> money, right? Um, so let's see, where were we? This one we couldn't right? find the revenue Is growth. That, that didn't have the revenue growth in it. Yeah, this has all the analysts and what they're saying. I mean, good upgrades across the board. Second straight quarter where they achieved a trifecta in terms of growing the accounts, hours, and average revenue per a user, too. We'll try and dig down to it. Um, yeah, that's the one. All right, we'll try and find it. But Because but, I saw, I think the average revenue went up like $2 from $21 to $23. That's okay. huge. Yeah, as you're adding and, all and these people. And is Roku, so do they charge? This to, is what I don't understand, okay. to be fair. Um, why you pay for Roku, they, they, I just don't understand. I haven't dug into it myself. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, to have a streaming platform, I know you can buy a Roku box, right? It's kind of like an Apple TV. Right. It's like something that makes sense. But I don't get what I don't have a fundamental aspect of what they provide for their subscription service. Okay. So they must have access to some type of content or so forth. If you're out there, you know what they do. Give us a call. 877-927-6648. Seriously, I, 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 if you I got know. a Roku and you understand it, because. Yeah. That's a lot of money, um, $23 per person, when in reality... It's a lot of money if you're just talking a uh, clicker. Yeah, access to an online platform. Right. I have a smart TV, right? so I don't even need a, a Roku box. Right. You know, I can get access to, and then I pay for Netflix, then I pay for Prime. So sure. Maybe, yeah. So if we go to the 10-year note, folks, you're going to see both of these. Uh, ten, we'll do the 10-year and the 30-year. Yeah, bottom line, you can see 10-year got to uh, 130.27 yesterday. 2.9 million, guess what? You're backing down with 1.1, you're going into 2.6, you're not gonna do more volume than that, so you're backing down with light volume. The 30 did the full ABC structure up. The, the price projection was, was 163, like 20 or something. We did 163.31. Pretty remarkable, now off more than three full points in that 30 year from where we were yesterday. Yeah. And look at the anemic volume, though. You, guess what? You're 244,000. You're going into 495. It, that'll do 400 today, okay. probably. Um, that's yeah. to me. That's a natural retracement, though, in a market that still wants higher price. And I tell you what, let's take a look at natural gas real quick. Oh yeah, we're good. coming up to natural gas inventory numbers. Jump over here, get into commodities, see how we're trading this natural gas. Where we've been at? Yeah. I haven't taken a look in a while. Seriously. 210, which we're sitting at. Cheap natural gas, that's for sure, man. Um, so a little bit of volatility even this morning, man. 8 a.m., we're up there at about 213, so we're trading down to 210. This is yesterday's action, anywhere from about 214 to 208, putting this on a little bit of a longer term time frame. Where we back up, you go just to the beginning of August, we made it up as high as about 230. 
So we're going to take a break in about 30 seconds, and we'll come back with those natural gas numbers right at 10.30 on the dot. But that's a lot of volatility, man. It is. I mean, the market, of course, tremendous volatility. It seems like everything in the beginning of August, man. You want volatility. So much for summer trading in August. 232 down to 204. 30 pennies in the span of four or five days. That's 3,000 a contract, Amazing, folks. right? 3,000 um, a contract. So that natural gas, we say it on natural gas, <laughs> have some defined risk, <laughs> And, man. you know, to go back to Kraft for a second, uh... Yes, uh, Buffett still is the uh, huge position in craft. We had a question there, in fact. I'll get you exactly PHDC. So Kraft at 26.59, and Berkshire owns 26.7% wow. of it, or 325 million shares with an M. That's a $1.5 billion loss today. That's a hit. That's a Thank hit. God he's in the insurance business. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so let's see. Natural gas stockpiles rode 55 BCF. So I wonder what we're looking for. Looks like about 60. Okay. So a little bit under that price level. We'll jump back to the chart. Where are we at? Come on, cooperate. It's not coming up. Oh, there we go. Let's pull it over. And natural gas spiking a little bit higher. Looks relatively calm on this chart, but we just went from 209 
up to 213.40. Oh, this is an hourly that I had. Remember, I jumped back to it. No wonder okay. I was like, why does that look so calm? Yeah, it doesn't look so calm no more. Um, quite a little jump, going from about 210 to 213. It would make sense. Only at 55 billion cubic feet. Market was looking for 60, less supply, higher prices, right? But we'll see. We were just at 230 a few days ago, so we'll keep our eye on that contract. Let's go to Zillow. So Zillow is getting smacked this morning, uh, big time, folks. You're down 20%, down $8.90. You're trading at 40.85. 21% short percent interest. Some yeah, happy shorts out there today. Money. I wonder what the expected move was. I bet it was a big number though. Look at that chart. Yeah. And you know, yeah, Zillow. Because look down. at what it did last. I bet that's last. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe Some of those earnings have been yeah. huge. So I bet that. So Zillow, this can get down to, what, $33 pretty easy. So here's the news, right? We were talking about this the last time they came out with numbers because it's blowing my mind that what they're, a lot of big companies are trying to get into this, folks. But the thing that's pretty amazing, just we're going to take the CEO's word on this. And this is where I think this, they're going to have a hard time making money in this business. So the, the top of it says Zillow shares fall after forecasting home flipping losses. And then CEO Barton sees 4 to 5% profit from Zillow offers at scale. That's not enough money <laughs> to, you know, if they think they can do 4 to 5% without making the mistakes in a business that you're talking about from 200 to 300 to $400,000 in houses, it's like, that's so tiny. Yeah, all you I know? would say is that number is probably the calculation with the mistakes in it, as in you're making 6 to 7 to 8%, and you know that there's going to be, when you're flipping that many houses, it's just a, you know, uh, an average rate of how many you're going to have all hell break loose, right? Yeah. As you try and do it, for sure. So they lost 14%. Um, the shares fell. The right? shares fell. Uh, as they forecast, the new home flipping business would lose as much as $80 million in the third quarter. Um, overall, the home search companies projecting third quarter uh, EBITDA between $18 million loss and a $2 million gain. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so here, the company generated $249 million in second quarter revenue from Zillow offers. Um, and a logarithm... Yeah, algorithm-driven spin at home flipping, right? Yeah, yeah. and received requests for 70, from 70,000 consumers who wanted to sell their homes to, to Zillow over the Internet. Uh, Chief Executive Richard Barton said in an interview that the revenue growth from Zillow offers showed that the business is working. It's being driven by people who want an easy, convenient, hassle-free way to sell a home. He said, we're far from being at what I would call scale. I'm confident that when we get to scale, we'll be able to do 4 to 5% um, profit off of this business. Going forward, Zillow will need to show that it can turn a profit in a capital-intensive, low-margin business of flipping homes. Consumers are willing to sell their homes at a small discount in exchange for speed, and certainly selling a home over the Internet uh, when fees rise too far beyond what traditional brokers charge sellers in return sellers return to the old methods so, so let's bet when when fees rise too far beyond what traditional brokers charge sellers return to the old methods yeah. you know saying that those fees um are going to be important they in cut into of, it yeah, yeah. and then i think they're saying you know the, they're going to keep them small but they're going to be able to do big numbers they're thinking because they're going to get a, a process in place that can just be really quick and people will be able to be willing to sell them their house for a little bit less money than they know they could get if you put it on the market and you wait three to six months to nine months, right? Yes. And you try and get it. No, so I, I, the, I agree with that portion of it. That, yeah. that, that portion of it I agree with. Where the problem comes in is that now you have the house, then you're going to fix the house up and, and move the house out the other side. Sure. And so what they have been doing, this is how they come into the losses because I've, I've seen how they do it. They, it. And this is public information. Yep. So what, what happens? Picture, I buy a house off you, let's just say 100 grand, right? And yeah, yeah, happy. I Are think you Zillow in this? Is yeah, I'm yeah, Zillow. Right. You think it's worth yep. 105 yep. grand, right? Yep. I get in the Zillow. You know, we put 10 grand into it. Sure, it's we're at 115, right? Yep. Zillow says, okay, you know, I, I want 124 for it, right? Yep. They put it out at 124. If that thing doesn't sell, like, in, you know, basically a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. They just bring it right down, and then they'll take a loss immediately. Yeah. So right, that's yeah. pretty intense. I, I, that's, I think it's, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes, but I think, uh, I think it'll, I think. It'll, it's going to keep the real estate market uh, having a bid. That's the cool thing about it.
Okay. Meaning the cities that they're in doing this already. Yes. That is competition for anyone buying sure. houses. And it's straight know? liquidity. Um, yeah. Now the, the counter would be, if I was a holder of Zillow, the last thing you would actually want, I think, is if you're employing the strategy like Zillow is, is to start just building and holding every house as you're saying that they, they're not getting the price they want. Well, just move it out at the price that the market's at, okay? Don't tell me what you think it's at yeah. and tell me that you're going to keep it at that price for a year or two because guess what? You ever hit a real downturn, that company could go oh. bankrupt. So I, I, at least they're, they're actively, they want to flip them. They don't want to be real estate investors in the, in the plan that you're talking about. Yeah. So they get them in and they get them out at whatever the price that market's putting on them in two to four weeks or whatever it is, right? Because if they don't have that price, then that means that the price is below where they're saying it is, okay? The market doesn't lie, man. If you, you can't sell that at the market, guess what? That's not the market price, because if it was the market price, it would sell at that market, you know? And so they're, they're in the business of move it out, man, because if you start keeping, I mean, they're, they're gonna do massive amounts of volume. So if you ever had that downturn, and they said, ah, we don't wanna sell at this price, we're gonna hold every property we have, it wouldn't take long to empty out that company's coffers. No, yeah. no, it won't, yeah. it won't take long for them to go uh, keep losing money if they buy and sell them at losses either. That's for sure, yeah. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at the uh, XAU. Actually, let's go look at Nugget and uh, because, you know, we wish that we had got those calls. And look, at it's, ha it's hanging up here, man. Yeah. It's still doing good. I mean, gold's you still know, at, what, 1505, Yeah, no, it's, 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 you know, for... You know, Nugget got the 41 and 90 yesterday. You're 38 to 28 right now. Yeah. You're pulling back with uh, light volume. This is pretty cool. How about now? Uh, can we jump? We had a yeah. call, Newmont. Um, Newmont. I was talking okay. to a client this morning, was asking you maybe if you could take a look at Newmont. Yeah. Uh, they said they were maybe in it, looking for a price target or where it could okay. maybe jump an upside projection let's, of where maybe you could look to sell as yeah. it's near those highs. Let's take a look. So. Oh, this is nice. See, this is okay. So, we're, yesterday, picture this, folks. You know, your last swing point up here, the high, 6.6 .6 million, 40.33. Yesterday, 15.8 million, yep. 39. I love it when it push, pushes swing points with volume. That's saying that you have more people coming in, hasn't broken the high yet, you are pushing with volume, which is really positive. And now, what's going to happen? is that you're backing down a little, so you're gonna be able to see how you're backing down with light volume, which is pretty cool. And then put this on a weekly. Let me put this on a weekly. Whoa. I'm gonna put it on a monthly, actually, because sure. yeah. I wanna see where, oh, there it is. Yeah, no, you know, Newmont wants to run this uh, 44 bucks. So maybe that's a projection if you're in there to look at Yeah, uh, it's, it's the, and on a lot of these folks, it's the highs of, August of 2016. That's, okay. what, that's what they're trying to run into. Yeah. You know, and that's cool. a big number, man. That so, the cool about that is that, guess what? If you look at that run we had from January to August, this run started, you know, realistically, you can bring it all the way back to uh, October, but yeah. that run started at a much higher level. We're going to be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 174. You get the NASDAQ up 100. S&Ps are up 32. And uh, you get a good bounce going here. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, bottom line, what I expect we're going to see here, folks, is that you're going to get a contraction of volume out here today. You know, what you had yesterday is this. So picture what you had. We had come down hard. Yesterday, you came down hard. You basically almost got to the lows, and it gave it up on energy. You know, we went... 140 million shares into 178. So it's like, okay, you know, you can't get below that low. Now the key is going to be, as we go higher, are you going to see that contraction? My take is we are, and guess what? This could get really deviant and get all the way up to 295. And if that's what we get, if we get contraction all the way up there, that's going to be a nice sell. Because <laughs> uh, my take is that there's a much larger ABC structure on the way down. Now that's a 0.618. Retracement. So if you got there, that really would be deviant because okay. that would be saying that, you know, you wouldn't take out the low the next time down. You know, we'll see how we can handle the bar in the middle um, versus uh, 0.618, which is not that much higher than we are. Yeah, it's a couple, about three points higher. Even, yeah. What's the high? Maybe that guy up yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Down to the low. Yeah. So right in there, yeah. 294.39, kind of the low of August 1st. To yeah. right around that area, the low right. of the 31st. Yeah. And then the other one to watch is kind of like right where we are right now, I think. Yeah, 291, what is that? 291.97 is the 50. I suspect we're going to get, yeah, uh, 293 is game. You know, we'll, we'll see. How the, today's Thursday, right? It yeah. is. This, this can run Plenty right. Plenty of time. Right, I say it, it seriously. It, exactly. <laughs> you, get, you get today, you get tomorrow. And if that's what you see, then you get some action. And I heard you talking about the VIX on yeah. the news update. We're going back to a nine VIX, they, man. They crushed that. <laughs> Look at that. We're going that back to a crush. nine in no time. That was quick, man. Yeah, seriously. It's always quick. It is. It's like, wow. But it's always amazing because it's always something where, you know, and this trades off the S&P, but just to exaggerate how big the numbers get, right, you get the Dow off like 600, 800, 1,000 points. The VIX is going up, and then, boom, by the next day, everything's, forget that happens. Seriously. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the strength versus the weakness inside the uh, Dow Industrials, uh, Visa's putting 21 positive, Apple 16, uh, Chevron 16. That Let's go back to the banks a second. This is serious business. Kevin yeah. Hanks brought this up. This is telling me that the banks very well could be some of the first ones, folks, that actually get down to the December lows that I'm looking at the S&P to go to. Uh, because what you had out here yesterday mm -hmm. is that this was... You had some real volume coming into this last swing point. Look at, you know, the last swing point, May, $104, $10.9 million. Well, J.P. Morgan is 17.3. Big number. You know, that's some selling. And now you get the big contraction out here today. Yeah. 
Bank of America, BAC. Let's take a look at BAC. And it is remarkable. We just had the 10-year go from 3.2 down to 1.59. Ouch, man. Ouch. Seriously. And Bank of America, let's see. What's yeah, that? That's 76 million. Yeah, there's more selling versus 50. And I mean, look at that drop just from 30, <laughs> over 31, 3106 yeah. down to what is low, 2712. Right. It's talking about $3. You're talking about 10% haircut in a bank. Banks are not supposed to have 10% no. swings in a week. Yeah. Seriously. When, when nothing individual has happened to that bank. It's right. just an economy rate story. Okay, here it is. This is beautiful. I love it. Berkshire Hathaway already broke it. So that broke its swing point with volume. This is a big one. Okay, so now let me figure this out. So Berkshire, yeah, same number. You know, Berkshire, look at this. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So Berkshire very well is leading the posse down. Okay, so what is that over there? That's interesting. So December 2017, we're at the same price. Berkshire's going to go after the bottom of this consolidation, which is uh, 186. Yeah. Now, that would make sense, you know, uh, they're a monster, there's no doubt about that, and, and they make a fortune on the, the insurance, there's no doubt, yes. but, you know, that's a portfolio, too, so if the portfolio, well, if the market's moving down, it's really a portfolio that you're talking about inside I, of that. And I wonder if service and retailing, I wonder if craft falls into that um, category. I wonder how that shakes out, but 70 I'd billion, say it would, yeah. Yeah, as I look down here, right, in terms of manufacturing, 60 do, insurance, 57, and then you got a little bit of a drop off with... Railroads yeah, and energy. And, and energy. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild. $500 billion company. Conglomerate. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Let's check back on natural gas, see how that market's reacting. A little bit of a pop. We got that initial thrust right up to almost 214, paired it a bit. We're sitting at 210 almost as we came into those inventory numbers. So the market jumping around a bit. But in the context, even where we were yesterday, we saw that type of action. We were up to the upper bound, kind of right where we spiked to. Pretty cheap natural gas across the board, man. Continuous. Yep. We got plenty of natural gas, as we were saying last week. Uh, it seems like it get get even cheaper. It's been there for so long. I mean, it's so wild. Yeah, man. it has. So, some of the uh, higher volume equities out here, what do we got? What's uh, sticking out? Well, we are talking about Zillow. You know what? Let's jump to Uber. Oh, right? yeah. And actually, before we do, I'm going to pull up the expected move. Um, we had, actually, we'll, we'll jump to a few. So we had Lyft earnings, right? Lyft up, look at that spike, though, all the way to 68 initially on that chart on the numbers last night. <laughs> a quick reaction, you get the conference call at 5 p.m. Eastern time last night. Made it back to 65. We're trading at 62, 61 right now on Lyft with their earnings. We get Uber after the bell. Trading up 6%, probably on whatever Lyft was talking yeah. about in terms of the market for ride sharing right. is doing well. They're all going to benefit. Get into the Analyze tab. We'll pull up Uber. Now, this is going to have some volatility, I bet. Yeah. One day expected move, $3.37. That is a mammoth move when you're talking about only a $42 stock. $4.20 would be 10%, right? So you're talking yeah. about 6 7% move um, on those numbers. We'll see where we get out. I'm sure they're going to expect some mammoth uh, numbers in terms of what they do. And, and you, know, you know what Uber did, did too? It? Yeah, jump into they, that. What well, they, they did is that they, uh, they, this, they got a 6.1 billion Dutch I weapon to avoid that. taxes. Yeah. So what they did, folks, is that they took their URL, Uber, okay. and they decided that it's worth 6.1 billion and they stuffed it inside a company in the Netherlands. Amazing. Uh, before they went public. And so they have to make that back back up first. <laughs> is that true? That is. <laughs> Let's go to our man John in Detroit. What's happening, brother? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Morning, great, John. great man. Fantastic, yourself? Fantastic, right? I'm, I'm sorry, what? I said I bet you guys are doing fantastic today. We're it's having a, a beautiful good time. day, man. How about you? Hey, I love your show. You know, I heard Carlos talking yesterday when he called in, and he was complimenting Tommy. I never like to be a brown noser, but it was nice to hear someone call in. I was watching your son when he was uh, in with Basil. You were not there. Okay, cool. And Basil was going over a chart, and Tommy said, stop, Basil, wait a minute. What about this, this, and that? And Basil had to go back and say, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Let's... So that's when I really knew that Tommy was right on top of everything. He's, he knows everything that these guys are doing, whichever ones they are, that fill in for you. That's awesome. So, it's, yeah, you're back awesome, to, John. Uh, Thanks to for Tommy. listening, man. And, and we got some great callers, man, out there that, we that do. help make the show, man, right. like yourself. So right. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. 
So thank you very much. Hey, I wanted to ask if you could help me. I want to take a position in silver futures and in gold futures. So if you could look at the silver chart, and I've been <clears throat> watching it since yesterday. Okay. Looking for a point to get in. I've been wanting to get in for about a month now, oh, but just waiting for a breakout over that. Uh, you know, in the gold, I think it was like around 1487, 1488. Stay right there, John. We'll be coming so. right back. Come, we're coming right back, folks. Dow's up to 173. Now it's 106. S&P's up 33. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we got our man, John from Detroit. We're talking gold and silver. So this is a tough one, John, because, you know, this run has been pretty incredible, um, you know, and the gold and silver market. So, you know, right now we're at 15.05, and, you know, realistically, if you're looking to buy the futures, uh, I don't think this thing wants to come back to, like, the 1460 area, but that would be the buy, you know. Um, if it pop back to 1460, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's in an ABC structure on the way up, a confirmed ABC structure on the way up, with a 1575 to 1580 price projection. We almost got there yesterday. When we get to 1530, or I'm 15, just, we have a lot of room. No, I'm just, yeah, I'm saying we're so close to that from where we've been, right, in terms of 
as in the risk reward gate, the high was 1522, the and projection was 1575, and, and, and we just and, ran from 1200. And, right, and so what you're hearing from me in, in the future market, this is a tough buy right here. Do you know what I mean? If you were in, it'd be a different st situation, but. Silver, same thing? Or? Silver's even more dangerous, man. I mean, uh, it, it is. Uh, it's been quite they, a run on and, this. And, you know, listen, man. Doesn't I, mean it's not going to go no, higher. I, I, like we, we were talking about it at the break. Right. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's tough. Silver's down 31 cents. I mean, silver would be. You know, 1645, you're at 1688. So just even the low mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. yeah, it'd be the breakout area. I mean, if it can get back into the breakout area with light volume, is that's beautiful, man. Because the, the problem in the middle where we are is like, where do you put the stop? You know, you don't have right, anything right, behind right. you. So mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. some kind of a floor uh, that is traded there for at least, you know, in this case, the breakout area is always a nice area. If it comes back with light volume, you get a rejection. Yeah. You know? Cooking, brother. John, thanks hey, so thank much for the call, much. man. I appreciate the insight. Okay, thank man. You. Have a great one. Have, Have a, a great safe one, one. Detroit, man. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, TD Ameritrade, uh, Think of Swim coming up next. And we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, bam! Go get him, folks.